um, this way I can share it with her. Okay, good. Go ahead, please. Um, well, my name is Leon. I'm 17 years old and from South Africa, and I'm currently a senior coach with the Next Culture. And, and you also, what's your status in terms of the college uh, sort of prospects? Are you going to university next year, or you still have some time? Or, or how? Uh, to be honest, I don't plan on going to university. So at all. Okay. So, and can, can you elaborate on that? Um, to be honest, I more just want to get like experience and like real life, like basically like ex culture for me. I'm not an academic person. It doesn't bring me any joy or um, like anything really like that. So I'd rather spend my time doing stuff I love and actually learning and growing as a person. So that's Fair enough, yeah. what and we have a lot of people, We have a lot of people who didn't go or didn't finish college and do just fine from, from Bill Gates to Mark Zuckerberg. So apparently yeah, exactly. now that the diploma itself is not as critical as it used to be. So, yeah, definitely. But when are you graduating uh, uh, high school or whatever it's called in, in South Africa? How does it work in that? Um, I will be finishing the end of next year. So I have one more year. Mm -hmm. Well, two kind of. <laughs> Okay, okay, very nice. Uh, I don't know, on my screen it's uh, Chipizo uh, is the next one, but I'm not sure. Uh, hi. Yes. Um, hi, uh, my name is Chipizo. Uh, I usually tell people, like, don't hesitate when saying the name. Um, it will come out, let it come out slowly. Uh, <laughs> that way. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, I'm Chipizo. People can call me Catherine. Um, I'm 22 years old and I am from Botswana. Um, I am currently a student um, in university. Okay. Um, and and you're in the coaching program, semester, right? So, uh, uh, yes, I'm a senior coach. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, yeah, great. Uh, I don't know, on my screen, Julia is the next person. Uh, so. Yeah, hi, my name is Julia. I'm 18 years old and I'm currently a senior coach in X-Culture. Um, I'm go doing my high school graduation currently and I'm going to start studying business administration in Frankfurt in September and um, yeah I think that's it. And what country are you in? Based yeah, in Germany. <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah I wanted to say yeah and, and you said in Frankfurt did you say? Yeah now I'm living near Dortmund if not, somebody of you knows that and then I'm going to move to Frankfurt in September. I, I went to high school uh, in, in Germany in München and then I spent another year in Köln it was a long time ago. It was like more than 20 years ago. But uh, there were times when I was in Germany for frequently and for a long time. So, but did the whole uh, X culture management spend time in Germany because Dr. B also? Yeah, was yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and we have a lot of participants from Germany. I don't know why, uh, but when you go like to the Academy of International Business, for example, I mean, usually there would be the, the, the greatest number of researchers come from the United States just because it's a big country. But then the second one is always Germany. And we don't know why. It almost seems like Germans are very good at international business. I don't know. <laughs> we have always quite a few participants. The only problem is that the university schedule is a little different. And so they're always a little too late and sometimes join in the middle of the semester. But yeah, we have a lot of German connections for sure. So. Dejus, I guess you are the next on my screen. Oh, hi, I'm Dejus. I'm 14 and I'm from India. Oh, you're I'm only 14? Yes. I didn't know that. So you're basically like my, my daughter's age. I didn't realize that. Okay. Um, I'm 14. I'm from India and I'm senior coach with X-Culture. Yeah, very nice. So you are very young. So for some reason I thought you are. Okay, good to know. And then Carlo? Yeah. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Carlo. Nice to meet you. Now I'm feeling really old because I'm exactly double your age. I'm 28 <laughs> this year. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a, that was a tough hit. No, I'm joking. Um, Carlo, I'm currently based in uh, Paris. I'm, uh, I'm graduating this year from my Master in Management. And I joined X Culture in two, early 2018, doing my bachelor's. And I did two semesters as a head coach, now senior coach. At the time was head coach. And this semester, I'm a senior reviewer. And yeah, basically, that's it. Very nice, very nice. Darren, do you want to introduce yourself one more time? Uh, he started, but then some people joined later. So tell us who sure. you are, where you are. So hey everyone, I'm Jaron. Um, I'm 17, but will be 18 in June. I'm in Malaysia right now, and I'm a volunteer medic for about five years now. Mm -hmm. And so when you say medic, like what kind of medical stuff? Like do you do like what, like shots or, 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 
I, 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 like, how do they just trust you to carry, you know, sick people, or do you actually do some medical things, like with a scalpel or, or I don't know, syringe or? So, uh, syringe, yes, I do sometimes, but it has to be a fixed medicine, so must have permission from doctors to allow us to use that. Scalpel, no, we're not allowed to cut open a person <laughs> in the back of an ambulance because that's. Uh, so you work with an illegal. ambulance, so you do the emergency uh, um, uh, calls, right? Yeah, yeah, I do emergency calls. I do search and rescue calls as well. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm afraid of needles. <laughs> you know, my vaccine yesterday, I was fine, but you know, not the most comfortable stuff. So, so if I were a doctor, I would be maybe like a psychiatrist. So that kind of, you know, medical stuff I can do, but uh, not the real doctoral stuff. So, Vedant, tell us about yourself. Hello everyone, uh, I'm Vedant, I'm from India and I'm 18 and I am a coach with X Culture and this is the first time being coached. So yeah, that's it. Great music last time. So I don't know, maybe we should do it more often because you know, who said that business meetings have to be boring and all about business? Why not do something a little extra? So yeah, I don't know. I would love to. Yeah. Like having a great audience is always amazing. Uh, Hilda, can you hear us? Can you talk? I'm not sure. Ah, yes. Hi, yeah. everyone. My name is Hilda. I'm from the Philippines, and I joined X Culture last 2017 when I was in Indonesia as an exchange student. I graduated last um, 2019, and I'm currently working full time and doing X Culture for the second semester as a coach. I would love to become a senior coach, but my schedule won't really allow me. For, uh, for that, and I'm excited about this project. Very understandable, very understandable. All right, well, so let me tell you what the plan for today's meeting is, and then we'll go point by point. So um, a little background. Uh, one, um, originally, as you know, Exculture was envisioned to be only the university program where students work in international teams, and that, that was it. But then, as you know, all kinds of additional developments have happened over the years. You know about the coaching program, you know about the uh, Exculture Global Business Week and Symposium. Uh, so we have all kinds of other, you know, sort of offshoots, so to speak, um, that have been introduced over the years. Uh, most of those were in response to the demand that we had from students or maybe sometimes from companies or from other um, stakeholders. And um, so there are several other programs that we are about, about to launch this year. Uh, like for example, if everything goes fine in June, we are going to launch, we still haven't decided on the name, uh, uh, for now we refer to it as Path to College, <clears throat> but it will be a sort of cohort based uh, program where we professors help students get into colleges. So it would be a, a sort of uh, counseling or, or um, um, I don't know, like cohort based guidance uh, helping students one figure out you know what kind of colleges exist which one you should be applying to and then all the way to you know recommendation letters application essays uh, SATs or whatever tests you have so all the way uh, you know with the goal of getting students who are interested in that sort of help into good universities another program again if everything goes fine we want to start it this year um, we have a lot of interest uh, both from Exculture students but also from um, other people um, to do uh, sort of university-based education for younger people. And so again, we don't really have a good name for it yet. For now, we call it early college. But uh, the idea is that we will record a series of um, uh, courses, lectures, uh, kind of university level courses simplified a little bit for younger audiences. And so we'll have economics for kids, marketing for kids, entrepreneurship for kids, um, international business and management. And for kids is a strong word. So we will be aiming at the, at the group of people, you know, or age category, you know, basically like you right before college or early college uh, years. And so um, we already have 31 professors who volunteered to be in this project. <clears throat> and so the idea is that we will record the video, uh, video lectures but there will be also readings and then there will be regular um, sort of meetings, face-to-face -face, uh, live meetings throughout the semester. And so again, the idea is that it would be to support uh, both Exculture students as they go through Exculture, but also if you wanted to take any of those courses and don't know where, so that this will be available. And then the third program that I'm working on now is, um, I call it MVP prize, but I'm not sure if it's the best name again. Uh, so I get probably, 
maybe 20, 30 inquiries a year from students who have business ideas. And they say, would you take a look at my business plan or business idea? Maybe we can do something about it. And so the idea is to launch um, sort of competition slash incubator, business incubator slash, um, I don't know, like venture capital. And so the idea is that it would be, um, if you know what Shark Tank is, it would be kind of like Shark Tank, but just goes on for the whole semester. And during that time, it's not just presenting the idea, but also providing all kinds of um, uh, guidance to the people who are in the program. So we will be, uh, again, having regular meetings talking about, um, you know, how venture capital works, how to write a business plan, how to prepare a, you know, a pitch deck, how to, um, I don't know, register your business, what country you should register, you know, taxes. So everything that young entrepreneurs need to know. And um, the goal is that over these several months, uh, we will go from the initial ideas to uh, better developed ideas. Uh, from people just with an idea to people with some knowledge uh, what to do with that idea to turn it into a business and then the best uh, whoever at the end has the best idea will get some money to develop the minimum viable product so if you have an app or you know idea or something like that you'll have the money to kind of build a prototype and then with that hopefully you can then go to the um, bigger investors and get some money <clears throat> and so uh, this one I gave you sort of the background because if you're interested in any of those there is always room for collaboration but one obviously that brought you here is uh, another need and um, persistent request that we have. And that is, um, again, I don't have the name for it, but um, we, we always have requests from our students for meetings with interesting people. And so we've had those requests both, um, you know, maybe some instructional meetings, you know, like seminars, webinars, where maybe uh, business uh, experts or professors can teach students how to uh, essentially do business or write business reports or it can be meetings with like world travelers or interesting people who maybe do something related to international travel or it could be something more like a podcast like you know similar like you know like you've seen probably Joe Rogan podcast or something like that so it could be same thing but more kind of centered around business around entrepreneurship maybe international business but also we even thought about maybe doing interviews with the best students from the last semester or maybe with the best professors and so there are all kinds of different, um, <clears throat> it pops up all the time with requests, let's do it. The challenge is that, uh, um, you know, I don't have the time to do it. Second, I'm not the best person to do it, you know, like I don't have, you know, a nice sounding voice. I have some accent, so the pronunciation is not as clear. So uh, plus, again, to be honest, I'm, I'm just not, not the best person for that job to begin with. You know, you have to have a slightly different mindset. And so uh, I deliberately keep it open at this time because I don't know what the outcome of this meeting should be. But ideally, uh, I'm thinking that we can try different, several different models. Uh, it can be, you know, maybe live, live podcasts. It can be some recordings. It can be some documentaries. It can be, uh, I don't know, uh, any, any other format of delivering content to not necessarily only ex-culture students, but maybe larger audience. And I do not, do not mind if we try several different things at the same time. So maybe, I don't know, Jaron and the Dant will say, you know what, we want to interview world, world travelers. And then, I don't know, Carlo and Dion will say, well, we actually want to do some series of meetings with, you know, professors who will talk about kind of business side. And so we can try that as well. And so um, these are some of the ideas. There is definitely a need. We have about a quarter million followers on Facebook. <clears throat> Sorry, we have about 80,000 graduates from Exculture. So we have more and more people all the time. So we have the crowd, so to speak but um, I never kind of figured out how to go about it. And we've had quite a few meetings and, and some of them, uh, some of them you've attended. So, you know, we often have quite a few people watching live. Uh, in fact, we had to upgrade our um, uh, Zoom account so that we can uh, host up to 500 people because the old one 100 was not enough. Uh, but then again, sometimes you spend a lot of time preparing the meeting and like 15 people show up and that's, that's the whole audience. So I'm not sure again, if it's us or um, I've been to a bunch of webinars lately organized, for example, by Harvard Business Review. And you would think like Harvard, you know, big name, uh, big name speakers. And I show up and like a few times I was one of like two people in the audience. And I didn't like it that much. I wanted to leave, but I was like, you know, if I leave that it will be just presenters talking to one person. So it makes no sense. So I don't know. I mean, it seems like some, some, sometimes people are a little overwhelmed with uh, you know, all these Zoom meetings. But then again, as I said, we often have quite a few people attending and then many more watch it as we post the videos. And so I wanted to kind of hear your thoughts here and, um, and then maybe see if we, I'm not sure if we want to decide today or 
think for a few days and just decide later. But if you wanted to sort of um, volunteer to be the, um, I guess, a champion or, or you know, the leader of one or several of those programs, we can test and see what happens. So we definitely will have no difficulties on the one hand, finding the people that we want to either interview or talk to. And then on the other hand, we'll definitely have enough people uh, to reach out and invite as audience to, you know, to start. But where it will lead us, hard to say. And so I'm not sure if, you know, if now is a good time to ask for your opinion or if we should go through the, you know, point by point. But on the agenda here, I wanted to talk one about the vision. So uh, I'm not sure if it should be more like a, like a Joe Rogan show, you know, where, you know, you, you get your microphone oops, and you talk to someone like this, or would it be something different? Then uh, structure, again, I'm, I'm not sure if it should be like a single program, like some sort of exculture talk or something, or will it be multiple uh, different distinct programs? Uh, your role, it's a very important one. So I know some of you are busy and maybe would be interested only to support uh, the, the initiative. Others may, be, may want to be the, basically the leader, the CEO, the, I don't know, the manager. But also when it comes to roles, I'm not sure, like maybe some of you will want to be the, the actual, you know, the face, the voice. Uh, in front of the microphone and the camera, and others may be more interested in uh, being the producer, perhaps, or maybe the, the content writer, so I'm not sure how to do it. Then another thing I wanted to raise at some point, uh, monetization. So we do have some resources, and I would be happy to contribute some uh, money, like if we need to buy some software or maybe some sort of, you know, honor area for either the hosts or the guests. So uh, at least initially before, you know, uh, as we start, but uh, I'm not sure if we need to think about some sort of revenue sources. Would it be some sort of product placement where in the middle of the meeting we say uh, V8 original 100% juice, or will it be just simply selling the uh, views on YouTube? Uh, so as you know, you can monetize it, or would it be some form of sponsorship, uh, you know, more kind of permanent or something else? So, uh, but it seems like there are needs for resources, but at the same time, there are opportunities also. So why not use that? And then also when we talk about resources, so what kind of resources do we need? So would it be just some sort of a software for the uh, you know, uh, audio processing later on? Would it be some sort of a thing like a salary for the people who do it? Or would it be something else? Uh, so I'm not sure. So, um, and then obviously the good thing is that we have multiple programs. Uh, so we have the, as I said, symposium, business week, uh, exculture kids as they call it, or academy, but also university but also then we do some consulting. So we have a lot of, of those kind of different programs. And it seems to me that um, offering some sort of a radio show, or I'm not sure what it's called, but it could be a very useful thing to support all, all those different programs. Like maybe interviewing a professor from our consulting team could be both a nice promotion for that, that branch of Exculture, but also informative for the students. Or the other way around, maybe interviewing students, you know, members of the best winning teams from the last semester would be interesting for the future students, but also a nice form of recognition for the past students. So I don't know, but it seems like it would be sort of um, supporting each other, uh, those programs. So, um, but yeah, so I, I wanna stop here and I wanna hear from you. So I don't know, what's your vision and how would you maybe see your role here or are there any specific aspects that you're interested in maybe working? Uh, so I don't know, I deliberately kind of keep it open because I don't really have a clear, you know, final vision. And so maybe you'll come up with some better ideas uh, for how we should go about it. Anyone? Okay, um, I had a few ideas actually for all of the points, but I guess if we're going point wise, I think I'll begin with the first one, obviously. So what I felt was that while it is in, like, it's pretty important that we do get businessmen and like um, global thinkers on our podcast, because that yeah. frankly aligns with the uh, the rest of X culture, uh, we could also look to get a lot of um, X students who are doing pretty interesting things. We could look to um, involve currently active students if they have something to say, because I think that's a way to gain more traction amongst the, uh, the audience, because frankly, um, they've already looked at all of the different client company webinars. They've already looked at like various other TED talks online. So they know what businessmen generally say, uh, but getting, getting, these ordinary people getting getting to know of their story it's something that's probably a little bit more popular nowadays i think in terms of um, like podcasts and and i think that's what something a lot of other podcasts have also tried out so that's something that we can definitely look to do yeah. at some point i even thought about one we can do a survey of our alumni to see what topics they are interested in so we can give them a list and then see which ones are 
sort of in most demand, but also ask them, so what do you want to hear about? And so when it comes to finding interesting people, businessmen, uh, politicians, community leaders, professors, researchers, students, no problem with that at all. So we have so many professors in Exculture that, you know, everybody or no matter whom we need to get on the show, somebody will know that person or will know the, you know, the right context to get the people. So no problem at all. So one, one also thought, and I'm not sure if you want to get involved in that, but I also thought since international business is so um, sometimes even polarizing and contentious that I thought maybe even we can do again, either as, you know, some of the topics, but also maybe as, um, 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 you know, maybe a separate branch or separate show, like Exculture Debate. And so I thought we can debate, uh, you know, invite people who will have the opposing opinions on an issue and let them debate one another in, in, you know, in front of a camera. Like, for example, we thought about doing something like that on Brexit. So, so should the United Kingdom leave or stay in the EU? Or uh, the wall between Mexico and the United States, so to build or not to build? Or, um, you know, like China, for example, is it a threat or is it an opportunity? So many people worry that China now becomes, you know, too big and too influential, but others may see that as a great opportunity, so why not? And so there are all kinds of issues where people would feel, uh, you know, have very strong opinions that are different. And so here we can invite experts. And so our role would be to be more of a kind of facilitator. So, and then let those two professors or businessmen or politicians uh, debate the issue and uh, not that even necessarily come to a conclusion at the end, but at least, you know, present the arguments for and against whatever the issue is. So, and yeah, yeah uh, for the vision. Yeah, pages, go ahead, please. Okay, no, um, not for the vision technically, but about the structure. So if you want to talk about the vision, then I guess I can go later. Well, let's do it, you know, in any order. So if you have any comments, yeah. Or, yeah. yeah, no, so about the debate thing, I had thought about that. Um, what I found, so this is something that had that my school had also tried. We also tried launching a podcast for like an online debate. Mm -hmm. um, so the debate did not gain a lot of traction, um, even though like it was like advertised pretty heavily, uh, primarily because the format of a debate seems overly formal and therefore to point it doesn't really seem entertaining. So what we could instead do is we could create a hybrid format, um, which in which basically involves the best elements of a podcast on a debate. We could have two different uh, sides that um, that talk about um, two different viewpoints on a very polarizing issue. Could be something like Brexit, etc. This could be a segment of the entire podcast, or this could like take up a majority of the podcast as well. Um, we have a free flowing discussion instead of like a formal debate instead. And um, we definitely talk about these kinds of issues. We're joined by experts on those particular issues. And we also, um, as non-experts, we do give our viewpoints on, on what we think as the people of, of a particular community. So that's something that we could potentially look to do because that would probably make the format a little bit more interesting as well as um, like hold the key values of a debate central. And again, we can always experiment. So we can always try different formats and see what works. It's not, not that difficult. Any yeah. other thoughts in general, you know, either on the format or on your role specifically or um, moving forward? Um, in relation to what you've said, this, uh, Dr. Bass and Te Tejas, yeah, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, if we would uh, be um, doing that debate thing or in the um, format that they just um, suggested, I think it would be, in my opinion, it would be better if we will be editing it or pre-recording it instead of having a live session about it to, of course, remove the dead airs or it might be a heated discussion. So it would not be a good idea to have it live. So at mm -hmm. least we can control the content as well. Yeah, that's, that's true. And also, uh, if you do live, um, um, it's always better to do a two-hour live session and then condense it to 20 really interesting mi minutes of content, uh, you know, edited than, than to have a long so. But again, we can always try both ways. I guess that the advantage of live is that the audience can get involved during the meeting. And so, yeah. But yeah, I'm, I'm fine. Like with my lectures, for example, I always do pre-recorded for students just because, you know, I can clean it up a little bit so it's a little bit better product that they can watch. So, but yeah, fine either way. Any other comments, thoughts? Um, uh, if I may say something, uh, when I was uh, thinking about the whole uh, podcast, I was thinking um, that 
the podcast itself could be seen as something that breaks boundaries. I'm not sure if everyone can hear me. Okay. Um, all good. Okay. Um, uh, the podcast itself can be seen as something that breaks uh, boundaries. So international boundaries, cultural boundaries. And I think our audience could be focused on, I thought of many three um, segments. So particularly uh, prospective clients that would want to work with um, the X culture uh, program itself and uh, people who are you know, starting in their young um, professional uh, uh, careers or want to, you know, uh, improve on it. And um, yes, ex culture students itself. So I was thinking that the podcast could include, yes, business uh, men, but people with a bit of more uh, influence in, you know, career, uh, professional lives, but also have a bit more motivational, more um, something that inspires growth because we do have um, a lot of young uh, viewers or people in, uh, people from ex uh, we, we're all young, we're really young. So something that inspires growth in itself. I do like the idea of the uh, debate itself as well. So I think the podcast shouldn't be too limited to one thing. So we can branch out into um, yeah. and, different and, aspects. And to be honest, um, I really, really liked and enjoyed um, uh, what Exculture kids do, or kids, I guess, Leilani always does not allow me to call you kids, but uh, the, the, the cooking show that you do and the country tours. I mean, this is really, really good. I mean, it seems like it's simple. I mean, yeah, like, you know, making cookies, check, what, what was that, the, the check cookies were, so, I mean, it seems like, you know, who would want to watch that? But somehow I really find it very informative and enjoyable. So I think maybe when we can do those for larger audiences, not limited. By the way, I get so much heat. So the university students want to participate in that stuff. And for some reason, Dr. B keeps saying that, no, 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 it's only for kids. And so, I don't know, we need to think about it because uh, it, 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 there is a lot of demand. I mean, not for everyone, but there will be dozens and dozens of people from the university program who want to join it. So it can be something even simpler. So it doesn't have to be something profound and huge as, you know, talking to the president or the United Nations secretaries or something like that. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, I, 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 with every, with um, everyone's contribution so far, I do see this being quite a, a big platform. So it could be a platform that kind of in, um, endorses or just markets uh, all the other programs um, under X culture itself. Um, so yeah, I think uh, long term wise, it could be something that, uh, you know, requires quite uh, a lot of heavy content. Well, let me ask you this, guys, if you have experience, because again, I don't really have that experience. So are these kinds of things, are they, uh, you know, can they generate any meaningful revenue? Like I know that there will be some value in this whole program or programs uh, for Exculture as an organization. So I know it gives us additional visibility. It gives additional resources for the students, you know, be it inspirational or be it, you know, educational or, you know, instructional. Uh, I know for those of you who will be involved, um, I guess it gives you also, you know, an opportunity to try something new, maybe to get your face and voice in front of an audience. Who knows, it may give you some publicity and some, some recognition, you know, that maybe eventually you will be able to convert in some sort of, I don't know, social or maybe real capital. Uh, but also, you know, hopefully it will be fun in the process, uh, you know, something to put on the resume. But do you know if something like this can be generating some sort of a revenue where, you know, it can be let's call it a paying job for you. I mean, like all those TikTokers and bloggers and stuff, I mean, are they making any money or is it more like for fun and just for the, you know, self, self satisfaction and, you know, vanity? Like, I, I don't know. Yeah, I see, you know, I see several hands. Yeah, you guys, can, so educate me about that because I, I, I'm completely oblivious as to, can you, can you kind of make something with it or not? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah so, um... What you see, uh, if you have looked at the algorithm before or the analytics of uh, YouTube and all that, uh, not everyone here has seen it before, right? So probably me or they just have seen it before. Yeah, so most YouTube videos do make revenue. They do make money. But for you to start monetization, you have to have a thousand subscribers. And I can't remember how many hours view. We have about, we have about 200 hours of viewage. 
Yeah, we have about two or three thousand followers on our main YouTube channel, and then two thousand one. But then we have about quarter million followers on Facebook, and then when you look at our videos, again we have many of them, and I never ever promoted them. I don't know, maybe if we did some promotion, maybe we would get more. But there are some, like I remember some of my lectures, all of a sudden get like hundreds of thousands of views, or at least you know I don't remember maybe tens of thousands, maybe not hundreds. But we did have some videos that all of a sudden become really popular again without any listing promotions. So. Yeah. But I'm not sure if that's enough to, to have some meaningful monetization. Like I never chose that option. Each view is about a couple of cents per view, if you look yeah. at it. Um, a thousand and views get you roughly about um, two to ten, two to five dollars on average, depending on the yeah. country you're advertising in. So since it's in the United States of America mainly, we will make a, li a lot more money because that's where at ad like advertisements pay more. Um, but yeah, continue. If you do want to make money out of it though, like earlier you could have um, in the middle of a video probably like half or like a quick break. Yeah. You can get a company to do a small advertisement. Many yeah. companies would want to advertise, especially with a platform like ours. So yeah. you can charge for paid promotion and all that. Yeah, when it comes to, to advertising, again, one thing that we have the advantage, um, we have a very special or very specific audience. So it's mainly young people, university professors, students uh, who are interested in business. And so we do get a lot of inquiries from publishers, you know, those who publish textbooks, but also from, um, there are all kinds of companies that cater to this audience, you know, companies that perhaps, you know, either sell some educational resources. I never, I always say no when they approach us and they say, you know, can we do some product placement? Because I don't know, I mean, first, I don't know really how it works. Second, I thought, you know, maybe the students will be disappointed if we start kind of placing some ads in our content. But on the other hand, I don't know why not. I mean, if it does give us some revenue and, uh, you know, if it's something we can use to develop this program, perhaps why not? Maybe we should consider that. Yeah. Um, so I was, I just wanted to add on to that. So basically, um, YouTube, basically how they give you money, it works on this principle. It's called CPM. CPM um, basically is a short form for cost per mile. Yeah. Cost per mile is how they determine how you earn money. Um, ideally, YouTube utilizes two different factors. Firstly, it's the length of your video. The length of your video. Um, secondly, it's the content that you're putting out. Um, the length of a podcast is typically on average 20 to 40 minutes. And um, the content is family friendly content. Um, so that's why, but we're also going to be delving into some really like big issues, which can be, which uh, like targeted towards a much uh, a slightly adult audience or slightly mature audience because this is not for kids per se. Um, so those two factors combined um, makes us makes our platform pretty lucrative for like YouTube as an ad like YouTube as a monetary stream. Um, however, initially we will not be getting a lot of profit because we will get only about five dollars per thousand views. Um, and even if we like rack out ten thousand views. Um, that works out to about fifty dollars. Um, so, but what we could alternatively look to do, which is a much more profitable like uh, platform, is Spotify. Spotify podcasts. Um, basically, what Spotify allows you to do is, per thousand people you reach, you get roughly fifteen dollars. And also, what Spotify allows you to do is that uh, since Spotify's audio quality is much better, um, they can hear you much better. So that is also something that we can do. Finally, Spotify has an associated application called Anchor. Anchor allows you to design your own podcast um, for free, by the way. And so that's something that you can also look to do. So what we can do is we can put up a podcast on both of these platforms because there are podcasts that exist both on Spotify as well as on YouTube. And we can generate roughly 20 to $25 per thousand views we get overall on about 2000 views technically on both platforms combined. Um, and additionally, I think it would be pretty smart to, uh, as Jaren mentioned, to involve um, sponsors or like conduct like product sponsorship, um, because what we can do is we can advertise products that align with X culture of sorts. They align with the company's values. They're not some random products like a random energy drink, like Monster or something. But um, it's something that's um, like pretty associated to what we want to like position ourselves in the market as so those three factors combined it could be potentially something that we could um, like turn into a viable monetary stream but i don't think in the short run it is going to be possible because this this process takes a very long time
Yeah. Let, let me show you very briefly here just um, again, and I have no idea if these numbers are good or bad, so you probably know more. You can see my screen, right? Yeah. So this is our main uh, YouTube channel, um, Xculture. So as you see, some of the videos uh, get tens of thousands of views, but uh, you know, none of them is in millions. Although some are quite popular and never were intended to be so, like Team Charter, for example. I don't even know who are those 70,000 people who watched it, but it seems like there were some people who were watching it. And so we have a bunch of channels here. So our main education channel, but then we have set, and this one has about what, like 2,000 sub subscribers. But then we also have a bunch of channels, uh, you know, for the community, for the internal um, um, uh, sources. This one, I created it a long time ago. So that's primarily, uh, so AMAB stands for Academy of International Business, Academy of Management. And it seems like we had a few videos here that also had tens of thousands of views. I don't even know, like, for example, for a long time, I was running this kids science club from my house. So I would have like a dozen kids at my house every Saturday and we just did science. And it seems like some of them got thousands of views. So it's not a huge one, but you know, there was something. Uh, these are some of my video lectures. Again, I put sometimes and again, like it's, it's in thousands. So it's not really that huge. But then when we look at the Xculture, um, that's our website. So where do we go here for the insights? Um, insights, I guess that's where you will see all those likes. We have actually quite a lot of following. And we had a few posts that had like 10 million views, like a post. So it goes way beyond the subscription. So uh, where do you get those likes? Yeah, so if we go to likes and follows, uh, followers, so it seems like we have, uh, I remember it was like quarter million, yeah, 274,000 followers. So that's, that's substantial. And, um, but again, I'm not sure if it's something that we can uh, use to promote the podcast, but you know, it's, it's substantial. And so when we look at the posts here, again, depending on what we do, but it seems like some of them get, you know, like um, substantial attention. Uh, like for example, this one, actually I wrote it. So that, that's my, my own content. So 102,000 people watched it and then like a thousand or so, sorry, 2000 um, shared it. So <clears throat> I guess we have something to begin with. So, uh, but how do we kind of convert that into some audience for the radio? Um, I suppose it's possible. It sounds like you have some ideas. Uh, so just probably looking at what you put out, um, there are two things that I noticed. Firstly, um, Facebook is doing pretty well for X culture, perhaps probably better, way better than uh, YouTube and Facebook. What a lot of people don't know is actually Facebook allows you to earn more money on average per view than YouTube. Does. I have no idea. And when you say one does better than the other, it's completely incidental. Like for YouTube, we never even like, all we do is just, we just record it and put it there. So I don't have to store all those MP4 files on my hard drive. So maybe with some promotion, it could be much, much more popular. So, um. Yeah, but um, the thing with Facebook is uh, the reason why that happens is because a lot of because Facebook has its own tab called the marketplace. And so a lot of people off of Facebook look to advertise and look to sell and buy products, whereas YouTube, that is not the goal. So that's why a lot of people don't really like um, buy into products. And so therefore, ad, like advertisements uh, do not pay you that much. So what we could look to do is firstly, monetize um, Facebook as well. Secondly, another thing that I noticed was that um, YouTube, the shorter clips that we had, for example, the one that we had for um, on the team charter that was 11 minutes long, yeah. that received 17,000 views. The one that was the most viewed was about 71,000. That was like five minutes long. So um, there are a few uh, podcasts. Um, I don't know if you guys know these podcasts. There's one very popular podcast by a YouTuber called Impulsive. Um, so it's about, yeah, it's by this YouTuber called Logan Paul. And he makes full length podcasts, puts them out on Spotify and on YouTube, he puts out short clips of them, which are like eight minutes long, 10 minutes long, potentially five minutes long sometimes. So while they, they do trigger the CPM quite well because they're longer than eight minutes and typically eight minutes is what you require to get a very decent amount of ads, but it's not long enough that people will click off early and people will stay yeah. engaged. So YouTube could be, um, a platform wherein we put up like the shorter segments of our podcast, whereas Spotify is where we put the entire thing up. And we could also look to uh, put it up on Apple Podcasts, uh, like additionally as well. Mm -hmm. So like what they just say actually is that um, Impulsive actually has two channels. So one where they put the longer ones and yeah. one where they cut the shorter ones. And the shorter ones is just a few segments of it where it hits the point correct, like hits the point deeply. 
or if it's a comedy one, it will start with comedy, then serious, then ends with a different note and all that. Yeah. So it makes the person interested in to wanting to know more or watch the podcast through the whole thing that it will make them go to the actual channel and watch the whole thing. Mm-hmm. And between that particular like um, one hour podcast that they have, they will slide in either ads. YouTube has ads that you can make money out of as well. So you can, you can do for that. And they even have uh, paid sponsorship or product placements as well in their videos as well. Yeah. Well, but one well, thing about YouTube is that um, you can't touch certain topics and you can't use certain words because it has a system where it detects that and it it will demonetize you instead of giving you money. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Oh. Again, something to keep in mind. But so bottom line, or, you know, to sum it up, um, so we do have a lot of interest from our original, you know, um, crowd, from our own students. We do have, so it seems like even, you know, to begin, we will have some, some you know, audience uh, from our own channels. Second, uh, we do have many more uh, on Facebook, and uh, if needed, we can even pay maybe. If, I'm not sure if it's worth it, but if needed, I don't mind spending some money even on promoting some of these uh, programs to the larger audience. Um, when it comes to speakers, again, uh, we have about a thousand professors who have participated in X Culture, so all around the world. So uh, wh- whomever we want to get as a guest, be it for the debate, be it for inspiration, be it for, I don't know, education, um, we can find those people, like including some of the, you know, like big names in, in science or business, or maybe small time entrepreneurs who can share their, you know, local experience or students. So we, we can get that. So the big question now for me is, how do we go from here? And I'm not sure, again, I'm, I'm, I'm a big sort of, you know, proponent of, um, let's call it natural selection, meaning that um, if we wanted to try several different formats in independent teams, I don't mind. As I said, you know, maybe like Vedant and Jaron want to try something this and maybe, you know, Tejo seems to know a lot about this background stuff. So maybe he wants to be a producer here. I don't know. Maybe, I don't know, Leone is, uh, I don't know, very good at actually talking to people. I, I don't know what, what you want to try. But what I suggest maybe we do is uh, we've had a discussion overall. Maybe let's take a few more days and you guys think about what you want to do and maybe send me sort of your, um, I guess, a proposal maybe or, or I don't know, um, request. And, you know, tell me what you want to do. So how you see your own role. And then for that, you know, what kind of resources you would need? Would it be just simply access to the, you know, Exculture account? Or would it require some sort of, you know, money maybe to, I don't know, buy some some software or, or paid promotion or something else? And so if you maybe send me your visions, we can then see if we can combine some of those uh, and then maybe create, you know, two, three teams out of you. Or maybe there will be more or fewer and then, as I said, um, I think let's try. So, I mean, what we can lose is we'll try, we will learn something in the process. And if it doesn't work, no big deal, we'll just stop. It's not something that we must do. It's not like, you know, if it doesn't work, you know, we will have no money to pay the bills. Uh, no, it, it's fine. And as I said, we do have uh, some resources in the form of people, uh, in the form of audience, in the form of uh, followers, in the form of uh, even money if needed again. So we are nonprofit and so not very rich, but for some basic needs, if needed, I can put aside some, some, you know, some cash. And um, yeah, send me your proposals or requests or, or questions maybe if you have any, and then let's see what happens here. So I'm not sure if any one of you is ready to say now, uh, you know, what role you would prefer. Uh, so, Jaren and I have worked on this. Just go ahead, please, I'm sorry. Yeah, Jaren and I actually sat down and we decided on basically what we would want to do. Um, okay. I'm gonna let him speak for himself. I'll speak for myself. Um, I personally, feel that I would like do well in a managerial position or like managing this thing, but on the front end of aspects. When you, when you um, introduce yourself, you should have said that you're 22 because <laughs> everybody older than you and you're going to manage us all. So that, that kid will go far. <laughs> go ahead, please. Uh, yeah, no. Um, so on the front end of stuff, so I can handle when it comes to advertisements and um, placing things on social medias um, and like, Gain, uh, getting sponsors, etc. So that's the front end of stuff and engaging with the community. Um, Jaren, would you like to continue? So I'm also with Tejas as well. I'm more of the administrator side. So I am good at like, if you need looking at analytics and all that, I am 
I'm actually well into that right now. And I have looked at a couple of uh, X cultures analytics already and noticed quite a very weird pattern as in different placements on why some videos are placed in different channels instead of other channels, which cause quite uh, like a confusion. So in my ways is that I am able to look at it in a way that we can put everything into one area that can boost it up immediately. Yeah. Okay, yeah, then that sounds fair enough, yeah. Although, Jaron, even though you said you want to be more on the producer side, uh, of all the people here, you're the only one who has the real big headphones, so you actually look like a person who could be in front of a camera. Uh, I have a fake microphone here. I don't even, have, don't even connect it here, so because it seems like the one that I have is fine. But when I do the show, I just put it here so that it just, you know, makes me look cool. So, uh, <laughs> so but um, yeah, uh, I don't know, Leon, uh, Tipizo, so uh, Hilda, the Dunt, uh, what's your, I mean, I'm not sure you don't have to commit to anything at this time, but um, any thoughts um, or, or you want to take more time to think about it? Leonie, do you want to go first? You can go first, it's fine. <laughs> okay, um, well, I'm, 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 a, I'm majoring in marketing. So I was thinking um, of possibly working in that department. I don't mind with working with Teja, so Jaron really. Um, honestly, integration is really important. Um, as well as I do think that I would also like to venture into a bit of the um, uh, graphic designing uh, aspect of the podcast itself. Um, it's something that I am you know, uh, personally venturing into at the moment. And uh, soon enough, I'll have the uh, equipment to be able to uh, work on that. And considering whether, um, I was just thinking about hosting itself. I do think that uh, it's, it, it may, it's important to have rather few hosts or just like few faces. Yeah, like recognizable. Um, yeah. Uh, because if uh, many people are just uh, hosting for different uh, programs altogether, I think maybe it, it could uh, maybe uh, negatively uh, affect the image of the podcast. It's really important to have that uh, face or faces. Um, so especially when you're uh, putting a face to um, the, 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 the product designing of the things. So um, I don't mind being a host. Uh, but <laughs> I would like to uh, co-host with someone else. Um, I think that way um, it could make things a bit more interesting. Conversation will flow a bit more better. Um, I have, <laughs> Leonie and I, I think we have like a really good relationship. Um, I also have a really good relationship with Julia as well. Um, not that I'm, so, I'm not saying I don't have a good relationship with Tejas, anyone else, but I'm just saying in terms of um, outside of ex-culture, we have communicators. So I think we have that um, relationship where conversation flow wise, uh, we understand each other. So I guess I don't mind, but in, if anyone wants to co host, really, I don't mind. So yeah. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I mean, um, anyone else has any comments? Again, you don't have to commit to anything at this time. We have, I think it was about 15 people who expressed interest. And as always, not everyone who initially expressed interest will be able to stick around. You know, people get busy with other things or maybe they realize it's not exactly what they want to do. Likewise, I want to always emphasize that uh, while it looks like we have both the demand, but also the resources to offer, you know, to satisfy that demand, uh, you never know if it's going to work or not. You know, in any business, uh, they say what, like 80%, 90% of any startups, you know, uh, vanish within a year or something like that. So, which means that statistically speaking, uh, you know, most businesses don't work. But at the same time, I thought, you know, if we try, at the very least, we will learn something in the process, but who knows, maybe it will work. And I'm not sure if it can become sort of, you know, a career for, you know, some of you or but at the very least, it may be something that, uh, you know, you, you learn in the process, you maybe become a little bit more uh, famous, I guess. I'm not sure if it would be the right word, but, you know, as, as a stepstone. Why not? I mean, you know, some people, I'm looking at what other people post. So, as I said, we do have a lot of expertise in our network. So, among the professors and the company owners that participate in, the, in Exculture, we have a lot of expertise when it comes to international business, international travel, international or business in general. And so, uh, it seems like there is really not much 
there is a lot of content on the web, but you know, quality content when it comes to business is, is not really that easy to find. And so if somebody is going to produce it, why not us? So I don't know. Uh, so then maybe let's stop here, take a few days, think about it, and then maybe send me by email your uh, sort of proposals or requests. And I'm not sure if we want to decide on some sort of teams. It seems like Tejas and Jaron and uh, uh, whoever else want to work together. But again, I would almost prefer that we have a couple of teams. I mean, it can be one big happy family, but the reason I like multiple teams, at least two and preferably maybe even three, is because again, it gives us sort of, you know, more opportunities to test different models and then see what works. We can then combine forces down, you know, down the road, maybe some people will, you know, naturally drop out. And so we can then, you know, whatever works best, we keep that. But um, I don't know, Let, let's see. And again, as I said, you know, think about if it's going to be a voice only podcast or will, will it be with video? Uh, like for example, when Chipiza was talking about, um, uh, you said editing. Uh, one thing occurred to me that over the years we've recorded, I don't know, must be a thousand videos now, by now, all those webinars with the client companies, all those video uh, lectures. I wonder if we can even go back and uh, edit some of those files and then create sort of, you know, recycle some of the content, add a nice kind of graphics in the beginning, maybe add some product placement or advertisement inside, uh, you know, in, in the middle of the video and, you know, maybe condense some of those one hour long meetings to like 10, 15 minute uh, interesting podcasts. Like for example, we have two professors um, uh, in Exculture from Drake University here in the United States. They have a consult consulting company. So they two run uh, as partners, uh, they call it Baton Consulting or something like that, something with Baton in it. But anyway, um, so what they do is um, the clients that they serve, they create like a 10 minute video, uh, not video, it's only audio, a 10 minute audio where the clients talk about their business. And so they basically describe their business model. They talk about the product, they talk about the challenges they faced and, you know, how they deal with them. And again, I thought we have, you know, already recorded hundreds of those over the years. And if needed, we can create more but maybe we can really have like, you know, like let's say Bob's beer. Like uh, if you participated last semester, you remember we had Bob, um, um, what's his last name? Um, the guy from Britain who makes beer in France. So first of all, he built it very well, you know, like a cruise around the world. So he sold his business, bought a yacht and will be going around the world. And I thought it would be an interesting interview for a few minutes. You know, how do you go from the idea to a business?